Inside Sport Fishing, proudly brought to you by Ford. Ford Trucks, built Ford Tough. Ford, the official trucks of Inside Sport Fishing. And by Shimano, makers of the finest fishing tackle in the world. Fish with the best, fish Shimano. And by Power Pro, experience the Power Pro advantage. Power Pro, proven power. Hi, I'm Ben Florentino, and uh, I'm a saltwater tournament angler. And I'm here to talk about some baits that I use in the saltwater also in the freshwater so a lot of crossover baits so talking a little bit about those outfits and baits that i use from saltwater to freshwater matt you want to tell us about a little bit of the game plan today yeah original plans go to san Clemente island but uh it's blowing overnight pretty bad about 20 knots or so so you're probably gonna take a look around local on the peninsula, check some stuff out on the uh, golf course, read some of that stuff for the fishing. So go calico we'll hunting. Yeah, let's go fish some calico. Uh, one of the original baits I started fishing artificials was a swim bait given to me by uh, a guy on a half day boat. You know, we're fishing bait, and uh, he turned me on to a handful of these. And the cool thing about fishing artificials back in the day was you didn't have to go get a bait at the bait tank you just catch a fish let it go or keep it and then uh, cast back out no bait change but this was the basic uh, bait that we started out with uh, back in the early days early 80s but it's evolved to to this you know uh, this bait happens to be a, a war bait ounce ounce and a half on a five and a half inch uh, big hammer and uh, big paddle tail, pretty easy to fish. Uh, it's mainly cast and retrieve. There's no jerky motion as far as in the salt water and the same in the fresh water. It's mainly a cast and retrieve bait. Dude, I go, what is that? Those are fish. Nice. They were going bananas oh over there, gosh. dude. They were all like this. Look at them. Chunky. Wow. <laughs> yeah, what just happened right there? Wow, I just, you know, out of the corner of my eye, I just look to my left and I go, what? No, oh. oh. He's got bit. There he comes, little guy. <laughs> well, they're bigger than this. Well, I looked out of the corner of my eye. And I saw these, I saw something just rip through some bait. And I looked again, I saw this big tail come out of the water. I go, oh my gosh, those are all big bass. So made a cast, I get bit instant. Fish are still working, Matt casts on top, but he gets bit. So we get a double first thing this morning. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah, just totally awesome. That's good local fishing right there. Oh, you know, that's what you come out here for. <laughs> you know, that's what you come out here for, that. Little guy, you know, but still fun. One thing about the swim bait, it's a very versatile bait as far as covering shallow water, deep water, or if you're fishing 
on the beach fishing boilers, kelp, from a half a foot all the way up to 20 feet. This bait is probably the most versatile bait that uh, most saltwater anglers have. Where'd that one come from, Ben? Oh, this one came from a boiler back in the in the off-colored water back there, swimming it out of the rocks and came out and hammered it. Nice solid fish. Yeah, nice beautiful fish. Yeah, I'll let them go and see if we can get more. Oh, oh that was it. Oh, did you get him? Yeah. <laughs> That guy, that guy. Great visual. <laughs> yeah, he's bold. Isn't he? Yeah. Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, that was you, wasn't that was it? <laughs> One of the non condition techniques uh, we really, really like using is this uh, weedless application. Keith, what are you fishing right now? I have on a big hammer sledgehammer in the in the toast color, throwing it on a new Therese heavy wax wing rod on 65 pound Power Pro, and uh, had some really good blow ups on it so far today. Got a couple of good fish on it, but uh, no conditions right now, so everything's kind of slacked off, and we're not not really doing real well right now. But keep plugging away and hopefully get a big one to blow up on it. That's a pretty uh, common to use though crossover bait with the uh, snagless swim bait style, like freshwater style. Yeah, Everybody I mean, it, be fishing it these days in the kelp. it's kind of cool because you can throw it right in the kelp and it's basically weedless, so you can roll it right over the top of the kelp. And uh, basically, what I'm doing is just throwing it over the top of the kelp, and then right when you get to a hole, letting it free fall down in the hole, and they're hitting it on the drop. So it's it's a it's a pretty good bait for when you have no conditions like this because you can throw it right in the kelp. I'm really excited fishing these weedless type baits, watching it skim over the top of kelp, and then you'll see a fish. You you know his back comes out of the water to eat the thing, and you'll see them swirl on it once. They'll miss it, and generally will come back. But you have to have the patience. Uh, you know, just drop your rod tip to give it that much slack so the fish eats it, and then wait till it pulls tight, and, and then you can swing. Just, it's so reactionary. Just as the fish reacts on the bait, you know, we we as anglers react on the on the fish. So it's 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 pretty awesome. But you really have to show some patience when uh, they come up and and eat it. Yeah, with these uh, nine-inch sledgehammers, it's a lot of uh, bait for them to chew. So. But you know, this bait works through the water. It kind of has a side-to-side a -side motion with this weight. And the tail has a really tight swim behind it. So between all that water moving and the bait, boy, these fish just can't resist it. I was telling Matt earlier, you know, the hookup ratio is a lot better than, than a lot of the thicker, thicker baits because it's a little bit thinner bait. <clears throat> and the fish tend to attack the bait right at the head. So when they bite, that hook pops out and you have a better hookup ratio. You see how the... As the fish crushes down on the bait, it's nothing but hook left. Oh my god. I saw it shoot out from oh. underneath. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my god. Look at that fish. Kelp bass. Oh my god. Look how he ate it. Oh, my line's yeah. broke. They just broke oh you off, huh? That's right. Look at that one. one. Look how fat and little that. Uh, he's not really. Yeah, he's, he's just square. Something. He came straight up to the boat and ate this. I saw, I saw yeah, you I get saw the, bit right there. Yeah. You know, for the last couple of years, the wax wing has just been a pretty big craze. And the great thing about the wax wing is it, it is probably the easiest technique to fish. It's mainly a cast and retrieve. Okay. Very similar to iron fishing because you're still trying to make long casts and work it by structure. But just lighter equipment, lighter lures, different colored lures. Get it, little guy. Get it. Come on, boys. Let's go. Look at them all. Look at that one. Oh, he right. got it. Ah. <laughs> Did you right see that? Oh, man. It's like three or four of them. That's a decent one. That's a nice Benita come up. Just caught this one on the wax wing. Junior, bone color. About four or five of them following it. I'm fishing a uh, Therese waxing rod, the medium with a Stella 4000, and I've got 40-pound 
<coughs> Moss Green Power Pro, straight tie. And just cast and retrieve and so, you know, I fished the same outfit at the lake, uh, fishing a smaller, uh, the baby, um, sized uh, wax wing. When those largemouth are uh, up chasing Chad, you know, the black and chrome seems to work real well. Rainbow trout and bone, bone, fresh or salt. It's just a great color the way it moves through the water, especially in, <clears throat> at uh, my home lake at Lopez, little off-colored water so the fish can really see this bait. And then in this clear, crystal clear water, they can definitely see this bait. I'm fishing a ounce and a half, ounce and a quarter spinner bait. Um, you know, there's a lot of that small bait swimming around, so I'm trying to match the hatch and trying to draw a strike. Nope. Uh, trying to draw a strike, you know, reaction strike, just like we did up at the lake. And, uh, you know, a lot of crossover baits. You know, we'll be throwing rip baits today once the sun comes out. See a little more of my activity up on the surface. And obviously the uh, swim bait. But no, this is one of the... Uh, one of the baits that we use in our arsenal is, you know, spinner bait. Reflects out of the, you know, you get a little bit of sunlight, it'll reflect in the water, looks like a few bait fish swimming together, and boy, these calico bass love to eat the spinner bait. It's making a long cast, so the fish have a lot of opportunity to look at the bait moving through the water. This looks like three or four, you know, sardine or anchovy swimming through the water and those fish will come up and try to ambush it through this kelp. Just rolling it over the kelp. Little guy. <laughs> Little biter. On the spinnerbait, huh? On a spinnerbait, yep. Yeah. Boy, these guys pull a lot harder than those uh, largemouth bass at Lopez. Look at that, he just inhaled it. Back in the early days, uh, you know, again, fishing artificials, the biggest standby was the surface iron. I'm fishing it old school. It's a 9 foot uh, Terramar 90H. It's rated a 40 pound line. I have it teamed up with a Trinidad 16A and I'm fishing 40 pound monofilament. One of those easy techniques to, to fish. Basically lo locating kelp or even rock uh, close to the beach or outside. Making a long cast and having a nice even retrieve back to the boat and triggering strikes. Uh, another technique I like using for Fishing for saltwater bass, that's a great crossover, is a rip bait. He's got it in his mouth and his body. Hold on, he's kind of like, so <laughs> Hold on, I need him. What do you need? I'm going to bring him. Let him out. He's like one hook. Yeah, there's a oh. <laughs> That's another nice one. Right, he just charged it. Charged Did it. Did you see him come up Yeah, he it? just charged it out of that. nowhere. Oh my god. With that bait in his mouth. You know, we're fishing these 190 Magmas by uh, Lucky Craft, uh, basically an 8-inch, 3-ounce bait. Really, really fun to fish. You know, anything from this 8-inch, and then when the bite gets a little bit tougher, going down to this little bit thinner model, same build, same erratic uh, movement in the water, and just uh, ripping. Yeah, LC190 Flash Minnow. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm, I'm all confused. Big bait, big fish. Steady wind, or are you ripping it? I'll just, yeah. Wine, rip, rip, wine, rip, rip, and Riles is coming up to the boat, full on, just turbocharge it. Just huh. <laughs> destroyed it. Sweet. That was amazing. Do it again. Oh, right there, dude. <laughs> oh, there's one. Cool guy. Outside, outside, yes, sir. Follow 
colors. All the colors. <laughs> you know, one thing about crossover fishing, saltwater to fresh, fresh to saltwater, it's a common marriage of techniques. For example, our bay fishing in saltwater is very, very, very comparable to freshwater fishing. We flip docks with jigs, tubes, swim baits. We fish spinner baits, we fish crank baits, we Texas rig, we Carolina rig. A lot of crossover, all similar baits. Five years ago, I had the opportunity to go up with a career change, you know, to go up and open a restaurant for a company. I kind of left the saltwater inshore thing, you know, down in Southern California and moved up there. So I got into freshwater fishing while I was up there. You know, it was kind of, it's kind of cool because I've only been fishing for freshwater for a couple years prior to that. You know, I'd go every now and then, go to Diamond Valley or, or Lake Paris and, and Irvine every now and then, but I was really never seriously into freshwater fishing. Well, I had to take advantage of the situation I was in. So I started fishing the lake probably three or four times a week before or after work and started putting techniques together that I knew from salt water, but applied them to the, to the freshwater. And that was, you know, anything from drop shotting, jig fishing, punching, crankbait fishing, swim bait. I took one of those techniques for about a week and a half, two weeks, and tried to be as proficient as I could learning those, having the right equipment, rod, reel, line, lure. And then from there, I had to figure out how to fish the spots. Points, brush, structure, deep, shallow. I asked a lot of questions. Never seeking information on where to fish, but just how to apply the techniques. It probably wasn't until about a year later where I actually started applying the things that I learned and catching fish. And what it did do for me over the, over the last few years was be, made me a better saltwater angler. Just recently, I just made a move back down to Southern California. Kind of changed my whole career 
Uh, I came back down, took my captain's license test, had my captain's license, decided to open my own business, and that's uh, Coastal Charters. That's been going very, very well since January. I've, I've taken what, you know, my passion of fishing and actually get to, to teach other people in my service. That's one thing about the guide service is I don't do a lot of fishing. I actually outfit and guide people into learning how to take all the techniques that, that I'm showing you to these, to these clients and teaching them. Uh, you know, catching obviously helps, but uh, it sure helps too to learn to also be able to use some of the some of the best equipment out there and uh, kind of make a decision on where you want to go as far as uh, purchasing your next uh, uh, outfit and what you want to purchase. It, it all brings us back to you know what we all like doing, and that's just going out and having a fun day with your friends, family, you know, nephews, nieces, grandkids, sons, and going out and having a great day having a good time. It's all about, you know, enjoying the moment. Uh, you know, I was able to share a passion with my, my son, who probably does better than me sometimes out there, but I enjoy, every day I go fishing with him, uh, I totally, totally enjoy it. And now that, uh, you know, I have a seven-year-old grandson, this is Alan, my grandson, uh, we've been fishing since he was five. Fishing is about family, fishing is a, is a foundation with, with, with kids and uh, supporting other kids so we don't do what we we can to help and enjoy fishing with uh, our family and friends uh, we may lose it